everybody and welcome to a new video and today we are doing a mass pickups video now these are pickups that i gotten like from a couple years ago some of these items i've shown on jason's channel and i might have shown them on my channel as well but i wanted to put them all together to show you guys because this is a lot of stuff i got before uh the pandemic happened so um just want to put it out there now i didn't get all this stuff at once i accumulated over time so just letting people know that you know i'm not trying to buy no mass bundle at once but if it, if it, hey, if it was cheap it, it, yeah i'd do it but that's not likely these days but anyways guys this is gonna be a long one so grab yourself a cup of coffee and let's get ready to go your whole team can see your upper thigh pour that smooth roast and aim that camera up high the best part of waking up Crisis for the PlayStation Vita. Um, this game is similar to uh, Smash TV. If you haven't played that game, that was an old arcade game uh, ported to Super Nintendo and a Sega Genesis. Uh, this is a top-down shooter, a lot of fun, uh, very story-driven as well, and it has lots of cool upgrades you could do during the game. Now, the game can be a little bit tough because the way there, there's a certain way to get the best ending, and I won't tell you guys. I'll let you guys figure out for yourself, but. I was mad when it happened to me because I was really thrilled that I beat the game because the game was pretty challenging in a fun way. But um, once you get that, that ending, you're like, what the heck? Like, what's going on here? But still, very cool game. Uh, definitely pick this up. Now, if you can't get it on the Vita, you can download it on multiple systems. Uh, it's I think the physical version is more easily accessible, probably on the... Um, Probably on the EverDrive if I can think about it right now. But still, uh, I will leave a link to the website where you can pick up uh, different versions of the game uh, of your choosing. And uh, yeah. The King of Fighters Extreme. I was lucky to get this for the deal I did. Uh, I actually picked this up on Macari for $25. And no, I don't own an Engage. Uh, and this is just a port, pretty much, of the King of Fighters uh, EX2 uh, Howling Blood uh, for the Game Boy Advance. But, you know, I'm a big King of the Fighters fanatic. And I saw opportunity to own it. So I said, yeah, let me pick this up. So, um, no way to really play this game. But I got it more as a novelty than anything. So maybe there is some engaged emulators out there where I could test it out, but I don't think it would be very fun. Next, we take a look at the first game in the Zero Escape series, 999. Um, this game is a visual novel, and it is one of the best <laughs> games I've ever played. Seriously, the story behind this game is like, it's like really thought out, and it's really crazy, and even more so in the sequels. Uh, but being the first game, um, I already own this game, but I picked this one up because I found it for cheap, and um, it's a variant cover pretty much. But if you haven't played this game, they are more like um, horror games as visual novels as well. And your choices can be very, very dramatic uh, depending on your situation. People will turn on you, uh, just to show their true colors, all kind of stuff. So you have to be very careful in this game with solving puzzles and how you interact with certain people. Now I talked about solving puzzles in this game, but what I didn't tell you is that most of these puzzles are like trapped. And um, if you don't solve them in a certain amount of time, uh, you'll get killed. There's just all kind of craziness in this game that make it very tense to play. Because in this game, everybody could turn on you. You know, you think somebody's really nice? Nah, man. If you do, if you do something wrong or don't do something they agree with, 
later on in the game, it might bite you in the ass. So pretty crazy stuff. I feel like these games are like kind of like the precursor to the Danganronpa games. But um, that's another topic. But anyways, if you see this one out there, it's definitely one you might want to add to your collection. But there are updated versions of it on the Vita. Uh, I believe it on the PS4 and the Vita that I know of so far. They have voice acting and all that good stuff, like upgrades like that. But if you want the original, yeah, it's still out there. Here's X-Men Children of the Atom. This is a fantastic fighting game even to this day. Um, some people may feel it's dated, but man, when this game came out, man, it was freaking like awesome. Like I was like, forget it, forget Street Fighter. It's all about the X-Men. Now, just going with the Saturn version, I don't know if it's just me, but it feels like Magneto is super hard in the Saturn version over the arcade. I could be wrong about that, but man, I struggle with him a lot of times. This is pretty much the definitive version to own of the game because the only port it had was uh, to the Saturn and the PlayStation. And the PlayStation version, uh, it leaves much to be desired, even though I found some enjoyment out of it. But still, the Saturn version is the best way to go with this. So uh, let me know if you guys have played this game, what you think about it. Uh, it's the successor, Marvel Super Heroes, probably one of my favorite fighting games of all time. I love the gem system in that one. But that's a story for another time. <laughs> Remother Broken Porcelain is a survival horror game that's kind of reminiscent to games like Hunting Ground and maybe even Rule of Rose. Now, this game was literally broken when it first came out. Um, they were trying to have a certain patch ready by uh, the launch, and that patch wasn't ready. So if you played this game, it was really bad. I mean, I'm talking about terrible. And I was really disappointed because I was thinking, like, how could you put out a game like this knowing that it's not ready to be sold like this? You know, like printed it out on disc. You know, I figure by the time a game is ready for it to be put on a physical format, it's got to be, like, it's got to be playable. This was not playable at first. But now I'm going to judge it on how it is now with all the patches. It's definitely playable now. Uh, definitely worth a 20 to $25 price tag, I would say. I'm a big survival horror fan, and this is a throwback to survival horror games. If you play Remothered Tormented Fathers, and you like that game, I think you'll definitely like this game as well. The idea that they had for this game um, really came out after the patches, of course. You know, if they, you know how it is, guys. Your first impression of a game could be your last impression, and it's hard to get that that bad taste that I got out of playing this game for the first time because it was it was horrible. You know, controls were broken, stuff wasn't working properly. But now, for those who want to get it now, it's definitely worth it. But just remember that the fixed game is not actually on the disc. you got to download a patch um, that comes with the game when you, you log, in, log in on it or whatnot. So just know that. But um, overall, I think it's worth getting. I had a good time with it after the patches. Uh, I even got my platinum trophy on it. So just to go in a little bit of the story of the game, you play as a girl named Jennifer who works at the Ashford Inn. And it's a, it's, they're pretty much snowed in, and later in the game, um, you're, you're pretty much being stalked by these killers. And you have to hide, outwit them, all kind of stuff, and try to find out what's going on. The game serves as a prequel sequel to the first game, uh, Tormented Fathers. So, like I said, if you like that game, you'll like this game, uh, a post-patch, of course. But before we move on... Uh, another reason why I was really upset with this game was because when it came out and the game was pretty much messed up, a lot of streamers were playing it and they were acting like it was good. And I was like, what the heck, dude? Like, th do they have no shame or seriously? Like, why are they acting like this game is not messed up? And, like, they couldn't control it properly. They were acting like they were so scared. I was like, maybe that's just something, some things that streamers just do or whatever like that. But it was just shocking that they were acting like the game was good and people were getting the false idea. Like, oh my God, let me go pick this up. This looks awesome. But... The game was busted. I mean, I just didn't get that, man. That was embarrassing. But anyways, um, it's fixed now somewhat. So, uh, yeah, go out and enjoy it if you want. Fear for the Xbox 360. I had to pick this version up of the game because the PS3 version is so much inferior to this version. And I want the best version of this game to play, at least when it comes to consoles. Now, if you're not familiar with the Fear series, it's probably one of the scariest first-person shooter games I've ever played. It's, it is a trip. 
and the intro to the game where it has a special team try to go in and take care of some business these guys get nuked by this little girl and it's pretty insane the trip about this game is that um you really don't know what's really happening you know if stuff is happening at the moment or if it's a hallucination or whatnot it's pretty insane one of the cool things you could do in this game is you could put uh when you're shooting you could pretty much uh, go in slow motion and tear your enemies apart pretty much you usually use that effect when enemies are kind of like overwhelming you or just hell if you just want to get out of a bad situation you know um you use that ability and, and you pretty much could get through anything after all these years, fear still lives up. I mean, the effects in this game, I mean, shooting like different items and just they have different effects. It's just like, man, they just really did a good job on this game. Definitely uh, something you want to pick up, especially with the Xbox Series X's uh, 4K patch. Alan Wake, as you guys know, I actually got the Alan Wake remastered. And this version of the game, I think I got like almost a year and a half ago. And uh, this is, my, of course, my first time telling you guys about it. I don't really feel like there's any reason to come back and play this one anymore. Um, I, I'm, maybe if they have a 4K patch or something like that. Um, the difference with the other version, the remastered, pretty much is the character models and stuff like that. And they kind of cleaned up some textures or whatnot. But if you haven't played Alan Wake, it is a survival horror game where you play as a journalist uh, who takes a vacation. And uh, things turn pretty much crazy. Uh, it seems like uh, the stuff he writes about is becoming reality and is trying to kill him. So pretty insane. This game is very linear, but still, it has a lot of good survival horror elements to it. I really enjoyed this one. Uh, if you see it on 360 or you see the remastered, uh, honestly, I would say get the remastered because it's like 20 bucks. But um, either either way, get which one you prefer. The Evil Within 2, probably one of my favorite horror games of all time. This game was amazing in story gameplay just I I just wish more people knew about this game so here's a story about behind this one I played the original game and I liked it but I did not love it I got close to the end of the game I got stuck and I was like man forget this game that's the first survival horror game I ever pretty much quit on um, years later part two came out I said let me give it a try fell in love with it went back and played the first one and enjoyed it even more so I was pretty happy with that I was actually so impressed with this game that I was going to do a review on it. You know, that's how much I, I got into it. Uh, there's been no survival horror game that comes close to, like, really drawing me in with uh, the story. The characters are great. Um, this is how everything comes together in this game. I just really wish this game uh, was more well-known. Now, just to put this out there, you do not need to play the first game to enjoy this one, even though I would recommend playing the first game before playing this one. Uh, because you'll get, you know, the backstory. But this game gives you pretty much the backstory of the first game. And uh, in a pretty good manner, I would say. So a lot of people could just jump into this one if they wanted to. But I'm warning you guys, this game is not for the faint of heart. You know, it has some nightmare feel on this that will pretty much trip you out. So uh, definitely go into it knowing that. But if you're in for a good story and a good scare, definitely pick this one up. And next up is the Three Wonders AG Pack. Um, this is an import game that was released on the PlayStation. And fortunately, they come out to America, and it was really hard to track uh, this copy down. But thankfully, I finally got it. So if you're not familiar with these games, uh, this was an arcade game, kind of similar to the SNK arcades back when they had like a couple games in one or whatnot. This had a three in one, obviously. And the first game was Midnight Wanderers. This is like a running gun game, kind of like similar to Metal Slug, but man, this game was actually really good, and I was very impressed with how they put this together with the graphics, the gameplay. Uh, it just felt really smooth, and the game was really fun. It wasn't a game that really sucked up much of your quarters. You know, if you, if you got pretty good at it, you know, you could get pretty far in this game. Very well done game. The next game is actually Chariot, a sequel to that game, which plays like a shoot 'em up. So, even though I like Midnight Wonders better, uh, Chariot is probably why most people will play this collection. Because, it, well, no, I won't say that. Midnight Wonders is on point. Chariot is an above average shoot 'em up, especially with the sprite work they've done in this game. So, definitely um, worth playing on this collection. And then there's the other game, um, which is called Don't Pull. That's the one I barely played, and I, I, I do think it's cool, but you're really going to get this collection for the first two games. And for those of you that are wondering how to play these games, um, because you probably look this game up and see that it's really expensive, these games were actually released on Capcom Classics Volume 2, so that would be an easier way of getting these games. And they're also released on the Capcom Remix on the uh, PSP, I believe. Um, I think that was what it's called, but yeah, they're on there too. But anyways, guys, uh, definitely happy to have these. 
Uh, if you want them, pick those, that collection up. Five to life man i had so much fun playing this game back in the day so pretty much this was the game that kind of got me into multiplayer games even though it wasn't well received the whole aspect of cops versus robbers was i just thought that was really cool so anyways um uh, reason i picked this version up was because um the game is still playable online uh with original xbox hardware i don't know all the steps but man i, I had to pick it up because i saw somebody streaming it and i was like wow you guys are still playing this game this is insane I remember playing this game back in the day. Now, when I played it back in the day, it was a bunch of cheaters because I was playing on the PS2. You guys remember stuff like Code Breaker and Game Shark? Well, yeah, those codes worked when you went online, and all I saw when you all you saw when you go online is people getting tased to death. It was insane. But besides the story mode in the game, uh, the online mode I would play the most was the Cops vs. Robbers uh, one, which I I forgot what it was called, but pretty much. Um, if you played the robbers, you would pretty much obviously rob the bank and try to get away before the cops got there. And if you were the cops, you would try to stop them from getting away. Those are really fun. And playing on Xbox, you know there are going to be fair matches going on. I don't, well, there may be cheaters, but it won't be as bad as how it was on the PS2 with the Game Shark and Code Breaker. But anyways, I just want to feel nostalgic playing this game online again. I had a lot of fun with it, and that's why I picked it up for this video. And next up, we have Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition. Uh, this uh, has, I believe, all the DLC from the original PS3 and Xbox 360 release. Now, I don't really talk about many first-person shooters, but I consider this a hidden gem of the first-person shooters. This game is freaking awesome. Uh, I, I haven't been pulled in by a game like this since I would want to say Urban Chaos uh, Riot Response, if you guys remember that game. But uh, Bulletstorm pretty much really pulls you in with so, so much. You could do so much stuff in this game. Uh, where they kick your enemies away from you when you're reloading and stuff like that. It's just all kind of cool stuff. And it just really changes things up. The levels don't feel bland. You just feel like you're on a roller coaster pretty much. It's really insane stuff. Uh, if you have not played this game, people, uh, it is a must-have for your collection. If you like first-person shooter games, you got to pick up Bulletstorm. It is insane. Here's Cladris Blaze. I talked about this on my channel before, a while ago actually. I bought the Play Asia version of the game because I thought that was going to be the only physical release for it. But later, uh, Limited Run did their own release of it and I got this from my buddy Cello. Um, I wanted to see if there was any differences in packaging. The only thing I noticed is just the cover is different on both versions. They pretty much came with the same stuff, but if you have not played the shoot em up, it's definitely one you want to have in your collection. It's probably one of my top five favorite shoot 'em ups of all time. I know that's 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 a bit much, but that's just how I feel about this game. I had a good time with this one. Now this game is available on, on a lot of systems: uh, PS3, Xbox 360, PS4, obviously, Switch, and I think that's about it. Probably Steam and of course uh, mobile or whatnot. Now the physical versions of those games. Uh, they're pretty hard to come by, you know, so just be aware of that. So you might want to just download this as a digital. Wait a second, I just realized the Switch version is still cheap on Play Asia as of this video. That one goes for around $30, so uh, if you want to get this physical, that might be the version for you. Or you can just look up the other ones on eBay. <laughs> Oh, 
All right, the Blair Witch. I got this when it came out. First came out as a physical. I think I picked it up at GameStop. And this is when it was like hard to find or whatnot. So this is a horror game where you're searching for a lost child in the woods. Now, <laughs> you have your, your trusty dog with you. And during the daytime, you know, everything's pretty simple or whatnot. But when it becomes night, that's when this game becomes pretty scary. And it's pretty unnerving, I would say. Uh, all I have to tell you guys is make sure you treat the dog well so he acts well during this because he's your main focus on how you get through this game or pretty much how you navigate through the game. And actually in this game, you actually run into the Blair Witch, which is pretty terrifying. Um, the dog, depending on the dog's actions, you'll know what's going on. If he, if he becomes like standoffish and you know, obviously if he starts growling, you know danger is lurking around the corner. You go to all kind of different environments uh, while you're in the woods. You find a bunker, which is pretty crazy, and just, like, the game is just tripped out. Um, I don't want to tell you too much after that. You know, I want you guys to kind of experience this for yourself if you want. The game is, you know, it, it is buggy at some, like, points, I would say, but it's still playable, I would say. But, um, yeah, just something to be aware of, too. It's not perfect. You know, this game was released, I think, at the price point of around $30 when it first came out, so... You know, not a triple-A title or anything like that. But I can guarantee that this game is better than watching the Blair Witch Part 2 movie. All right, we've just gotten past the 20 minute mark in the video. Hope you guys are enjoying it so far. Let us continue. I found Alien Trilogy at a half price books and it was going for a good deal. I wish I left a price tag on there, but I remember it being, I think around like 25 to $35. And I thought that was a pretty good deal for a long box game like this. So I've never played these games before, but I always saw them back in the day and I wanted to try them out. And at the time, I was hoping for the Alien uh, vs. Predator game, arcade game to be released on PlayStation, but that was never going to happen. So this was kind of like the next best thing for me, I guess, even though those games are like vastly different. But I wanted to pick this game up because I wanted to see if it had the same kind of tension that the new Alien games have, you know, with that fear factor or whatnot. And actually, this one does a good job, you know, seeing your radar and seeing where the aliens might be at. Uh, it's pretty unnerving, I would say, so I thought it was pretty cool. The game, I think, what I'm trying to say, it kind of lives up after all these years. Now, I haven't played too much of it yet, but I enjoyed what I played so far. So I picked up International Track and Field, and this was around $10, and I, you know, I played the Track and Field games back in the 8-bit era, you know, on the Nintendo and everything like that, so I wanted to see what Konami had done with the series, because they pretty much were known for doing the Track and Field games, I think they pretty much did like 90% of the games. I could be wrong about that, but who knows, but anyways guys, what I like about this so far is that it just really has an arcade feel to it, these events are pretty short, uh, and you know, something you get into and get out of, a uh, very fun game. Uh, definitely worth checking out to this day. The distance was seven point one one meters. The time was 17.01 seconds. So here's Dungeons and Dragons Shadow Over Mystara collection. So this consists of two Dungeons and Dragons games. Shadow Mystara being the best one. Man, this game is so good. 
Um, I wanted to get a physical release of this version because um, they actually released it as digital on the PSN store, but that game only goes up to 720p, and this one goes to 1080p. There's a couple of differences that I can't remember all right now, but it's definitely worth having a physical, even though this game is in Japanese, but you can still play the game pretty easy. Now, the footage I'm showing you here is still the American version, so you guys can see uh, like certain spells and attacks and stuff. But me and my buddy X were playing this online. It was a lot of fun. And I just like, when we played it online, I said, you know, I have to have a physical of this game because you just never know. You know, this game deserves to have history. So I wanted to like grab a physical copy of it. Most beat em ups are pretty straightforward, but this one has a bunch of hidden paths, different moves you can unlock. It's just really well done. And what you're seeing here, the footage of me and my buddy X playing. Now, my two favorite characters in the game is the magic user and the thief. I think they are the best characters in the game. Um, they are very fun to use, and they always are my characters of choice. But no matter who you use, you're going to have a good time in this game. But do know that each character plays very differently, so um, you have to practice them out to see who fits you the best. All right, so here is Cloud Punk. Um, yeah, so back when this first came out, uh, I was kind of like uh, talking about like Cyberpunk. I said, hey, if you guys are mad at Cyberpunk, and play Cloud Punk instead. But they're not related at all. These games are totally different. But anyways, you play as a girl named Rania. She's a delivery driver. And she's pretty much in a city where it's kind of like a lot of like, I want to say like, like suspect characters or whatnot, you know, she's delivering packages, she don't know what they are, so, you know, that's where the game's kind of like a mystery comes in, I would say. Now, what drew me into this game was the cyberpunk world. If you guys are familiar with movies like Blade Runner, which you all should be aware of, uh, that's one of the reasons it made me take a look at this game. Uh, also, the game has really good voice acting. Some characters are kind of like, meh, but still, the overall experience with the voice acting is really well done in this game, and you'll, st you'll really like Rinia and the characters she interacts with. There's plenty to do in this game. A bunch of side quests you could do. But one thing, guys, even though the game does look beautiful, don't zoom in too much on the characters because the character models close up. Yeah, they're, they're pretty blocky. But anyways, guys, if you looking for a good experience, uh, something that's like pretty chill, uh, definitely check out Cloud Punk. The city moves real fast, and you got to move with it. You make a million choices a day to survive in Nevada. And some of those choices are gonna hurt folks. Life is going to be hard here in Novalis. You need to prepare yourself for that. This is Corp Sec. You're speaking to Agent Rio. You are currently breaking the law. Corp Sec requires you to turn in your passenger and surrender yourself to... If Corp Sec have one priority, it's making sure business continues as usual. Here is Control Ultimate Edition. So I was really excited when this first came out, and I believe I got it on sale maybe around black friday 2020 i would say and i got a pretty good portion through this game but this game is confusing as hell like you know like what to do next and where to go sometimes at least for me it was it may not be like that for other people but for me it got to that point where i kind of put it down but i want to pick this one back up again so hopefully that happens soon uh i got through a good portion of this game i believe so you know don't want it to go to waste uh, but just, man, I just wish that sometimes that, you know, like some of the objectives were like more like, I don't know, like transparent, I would say, you know, sometimes I think I'm doing something right and it just doesn't activate or something like that. At least that's how it was with my first experience, but it still is a solid game. It was very interesting. The whole concept of the building, like kind of shifting in different dimensions and stuff like that was pretty cool. And I like the main character a lot. So, um, you guys let me know in the comments what you think about this game, um, uh, I know I shouldn't give up on it, so uh, I definitely will hopefully have a future update about me completing it.
So here is Battle Princess Madeline. I had been eyeing this game for a long time, pretty much when it was actually kickstarted. Um, obviously, they reached their uh, their funding for it, and the game was created. And I wanted to wait until a physical release came out for the game. So once that came out, I, I was gold on it. Now, you guys probably saw a long time ago, if you're hardcore watchers, um, that we, me and Jason, actually did a video on this on this channel. We did a gameplay video, and. Um, I was playing the arcade mode. It was it was pretty tough for me at the time because I could barely get past the second level. I don't even think I got past the second level during that playthrough. But the real way to play this game, honestly, is through the story mode. The story mode, it seems like that's the way the developer wanted the game to be played. So it's a bit easier than the arcade mode. But still, it's nice to have like both options of the arcade mode and the story mode for difficulty. So pretty much the way the game was meant to be played and the way the game was meant to be played if it was in arcade. So definitely try out both modes. If you're thinking it's going to be as hard as uh, Super Ghouls and Ghosts or, or Ghosts and Goblins, I would say it's not as hard as those games. It's a bit easier for... I would say it's 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 a bit easier than a Ghosts and Goblins game, but still, it won't hold your hand. So, uh, definitely try this one out, guys. And if anybody's already played this one, let me know what you think about it in the comments. I'm interested in hearing your opinions about it because... Um, I really enjoyed the story mode, how the game played, but playing the arcade mode, I was like, oh, man, this is getting on my nerves. But I still could beat Super Ghouls and Ghosts pretty easy, so I don't know why I'm struggling with this game, but maybe I just got to practice a little bit more. Here's our type final part two. So I was very excited about the announcement of this game. And when I picked up a copy, the game didn't let me down. I thought it was pretty good. But, you know, it's funny. I, I listen to a lot of other people talk about the game and they don't like it as much as they do the first R type final. I thought the game was pretty smooth. I mean, I don't know. Games are made differently, of course. You know, it, obviously, the generation between the, the first and the second game is way different. I mean, the first game was the PlayStation 2 era, and this one's obviously PS4 and Switch era, so it's, it's been, a, been a long time. But I found myself enjoying this game. I thought it was really cool. I love the way it starts out, how you're in the cockpit, and you're kind of like talking to your, your people, and then you blast out, and you just kind of like slowly go through the level. And it, everything seems pretty smooth, you know? It doesn't seem like a lot of enemies on the screen, but when you play R-Type games, you have to be, what I want to say, just kind of prepared, you know, know how to use your weapons pretty much, because if you don't, um, this game is one hit deaths and you know, you got to start from a checkpoint, you know So that might turn a lot of people off, but even so I thought this game was pretty fun But let me know your grievances about this game in the comments if you have any uh, I just feel more people just didn't really like it as much, but um, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts So a lot of you guys may not know this, but Final Fantasy VIII is actually my favorite Final Fantasy game in the series. Now I'm not saying it's the best game, but it's my personal favorite. And when I saw it was being released for the PS4, I had to pick up a copy. It's kind of weird, you know, playing this game again after all these years, I feel like I'm playing a brand new game. You know, I know that's a weird thing to say, but I'm, I pretty much feel like I, I'm playing this game from back when I was a teen. You know, I really like this game and I just really had a lot going for it. I think it's underrated to this day. and. Uh, I got this copy, I think, for around $18 online, and I started playing through it immediately. But at the same time, when this video was originally supposed to come out, um, <laughs> oh man, I stopped around, I want to say, uh, the Garden Festival, uh, when the, when the kids are putting the, the festival together, the concert together at the school. I kind of stopped around that time, and I need to pick it back up again because I want to go through it again. But hey, maybe I'll pick the game up after this video comes out. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously guys if you have not played Final Fantasy 8 you're doing yourself a disservice you know despite the battle system the game story and characters are very well done and it just shows you how a Square uh, Square Enix at the time well Square at the time was really ahead of the game when it came to graphics and storytelling truly amazing
So here is the King of Fighters, The Paradise. I've been looking for this game for a while, and I found it, I think, for a cheap price on eBay. I can't really remember it's, since it's been a couple years, actually. But anyways, uh, this is a board game where you go against another player. And kind of like Monopoly, you land on certain like spots, and you have like these mini games you do and stuff. So until like the person wins the game, but it's nice as you're watching the game, you can see like other characters from the series and like just these mini games that are pretty cool pop up. So definitely a fun game. Unfortunately, I can't go too much more into it. Cause I'm still trying to understand it. The game is in Japanese, but you just need to know that it is a board game. And if you get past some like some language barriers, I guess uh, it is definitely playable. I picked up Fatal Fury 3 because the store, I forgot what it was called, but they were having a buy two, get one free, and they had Saturn games there, so I decided to pick this one up for part of that deal. Now, Fatal Fury 3 on the Sega Saturn, it's not as good as it should be, but at the time, it was good enough despite the load times, and I'm talking about the type of load times that were kind of present with the Neo Geo CD system, you know, like you go make a sandwich while it loads or whatever like that. But still, it's a solid game, even though it's missing some of the animation. And next to Fatal Fury 2, I would say this is probably one of my favorite Fatal Fury games. It's just, I know it doesn't play as well as some of the, the future ones after it, but still, man, this one meant a lot to me at the time because, you know, it was one of the other fighting games I got good at, like really good at at the time. So, you know, this has a special place in my heart. So I decided to pick this one up. I picked up the Final Fantasy 13 trilogy and I kind of passed on this series back in the day because, you know, 13, I don't know, there was something about it, it was pretty linear and I just, I don't know, I just didn't play it. But now, kind of looking back on it and looking at the sequels, I think I actually might like this series. So I picked up all the games in the series, as you can see, and um, I just want to have the complete experience. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think what just threw me off in the first game was it was just too linear, you know, kind of like Final Fantasy X. I want something where you could explore more. But um, I don't know, maybe I judged the game too soon. You guys let me know in the comments what you think of, the, of this series, how it was, you know, if you played it all the way through or played some of it. Let me know. <laughs> So next up we have Icy. This is an action platform game. I think a lot of people know about this game, but I'm not really sure. So I'm just gonna just tell you my experience with it. So you play as a character named Icy, and pretty much she's the main protagonist of the video game. But there's a narrator telling you how to play the game and what to do. Now this is okay in the beginning of the game, but then it just becomes like just annoying. It's kind of like a backseat gaming, like someone like you're playing a game and someone comes up and tells you what to do when you don't ask them or whatever like that. It's like oh annoying. You know, so that's what it feels like playing this game. But um, what you could do is not do what the narrator tells you to do and do the opposite. So um, there's ways to play this game. It's really fun. You can play it like by listening to everything they say or you could do what you want to do. And um, I feel that's the best way to play this game. But anyways, guys, let me know what you think about this one. I got to the end of the game. I think I got to the end. And there's a certain level that I'm trying to beat, but it's like some kind of X mode or something like that. You have to get a certain amount of hit points and... I just can't pull off the move. It's so weird. I don't know if I'm supposed to be there. I should probably should follow the narrator's advice, but I don't know. I'm too stubborn.
Here's Deadfall Adventures. I found out about this game pretty late, and uh, yes, my cover is sun faded really bad. I, I I got it for a good deal though, so hey, there's that. But um, this one is an adventure game where you play as kind of like a British Indiana Jones. And you, just hearing this accent is hilarious. But um, this one I, it was pretty interesting to me. I only wish that they would have actually the game came out on the PS3, but as digital only. I would have rather played this game on the PS3, but still. Uh, it's something new, and not, not a lot of people have heard of this one, so looking forward to trying this one out soon. Here's Alter Beast Guardian Realms. So, <laughs> if you guys are a fan of the first Alter Beast game, uh, you'll like this one even better, at least in my opinion. I think this one does a lot of things that the first game does a lot better. The only thing I would say that I disapprove of with this game is that the levels are long. <laughs> I mean, I mean, geez, like it's like you got you need to take a break after beating one level. But uh, other than that, I really feel like this game is very polished, very colorful. It fits well on the Game Boy Advance, and a lot of people should try this one out if you get the chance to play it. Here's the Dark Anthology's Little Hope. This one started out crazy. I mean, when I say crazy, man, it started out with some like Final Destination type stuff. It was pretty like insane seeing what was happening to some of the characters in the beginning. And the game pretty much carried all the way like that until the end of the game, I would say. So uh, I thought this one was really good. Um, but at the same time, you know, these games, as they go on, they keep getting better and better. So right now, they're on their fourth game. And I thought the third game was really was better than this one. I mean, it, it was pretty insane as well. But uh, they're all pretty good games. So definitely check these ones out, guys. And what's cool about these games is that you can play online with friends or co -op, couch co-op too. But more people are probably playing them online. So definitely a lot of fun. Check these ones out. It's Angela. Ah! Ah! I got you. Here's Formula Kart Special Edition. So this is, as you can see, this is a kart racing game, and I have no idea why this wasn't released in America. You know, this game, I feel like, back in the day on the PlayStation, would did really well. As you can see here, uh, the driving is actually pretty fun. You know, you can play in first person, or you can play in like a third person perspective. I prefer to play in first person in this game. It really depends on what track you're doing. You know, sometimes you can switch between, but Game's a lot of fun. Uh, definitely is one of those games I feel like is hitting out there. Some people may not agree, but man, I had fun with this game. Now, as you guys already obviously know, this is an import game from PAL Territories, but if you have the means to play it, uh, definitely pick this one up. I feel like most people have a modded PS1 already or you know some kind of way to play import games. So just remember that you need to have that kind of access to be able to play this game, unless you're gonna play it on an emulator. But anyways, guys, I would say definitely check this game out. It's a lot of fun. Definitely worth your time. During the pandemic, uh, when... Half Price Books was open. I went in there and I couldn't believe I found Fatal Frame 2. Uh, I think this is, I wish I had the original picture I took of it, uh, but the game was going for like between, I want to say 15 and $18. And it didn't come with a manual, which I didn't care about, but I was like, man, this is perfect buy. So if you haven't played the Fatal Frame games, Fatal Frame 2 is probably considered the best in the series. It just had a lot going for it with the two twin girls and just like very eerie, very scary stuff. True survival horror. But um, it's really up to you which one you think is the best game. But still, 
the find this for the Xbox. I thought that was really cool. So happy about this pickup. She came into this house looking for her boyfriend. And then where did she go? This place must be So here's Chaos Control. I think originally this game came out on a Philips CDI. I can't remember, but I know it came out on a Saturn, but I was surprised to find a PlayStation version. And now this is an on-rail shooter, uh, very similar to Starblade if you played that game. Uh, I think the PS1 version, and maybe the Saturn version adds this too, like they add a little, like some kind of story mode to it that kind of has, has these weird animations. But um, if you can't stand that, just push the start button and get to the gameplay. And it's pretty old school, pretty throwback, especially, like I said, to like games like Starblade. So if you like Unreal shooters, uh, definitely give this game a try. So here's Collection of Mana. I actually bought this game on a stream we did on Media Glitch where I think we were like buying stuff on Black Friday and this was the only game I could pick out that I wanted and um, I, if you guys like watch my channel you guys know that Secret of Mana was pretty much like the first action RPG that got me into like all RPGs pretty much. This is a solid collection of games from the series. Honestly it came a little bit too late like I would have figured something would have came out like this maybe around the PS2, PS3 era, but hey, it's better late than never. Definitely worth your time if you want to try these games out. If you like what you're seeing here, um, you'll definitely want to try these out. So I went into GameStop a couple years ago, and I remember we were looking up my account for something, and the guy said, hey, man, you have a ho whole bunch of unspent points on here, man. You should pick something up. And I was like, yeah, you're right, man. Uh, what should I pick up? And I was looking around, and I found this light buster. And usually I won't buy something like this, but to celebrate Mega Man X, you know, I felt like, hey, you know, I might as well get something like this. So I thought this was pretty cool. Now here's the Nurtial Drift, so I got this game when it first came out, and it's kind of funny now, they actually released, the, they're releasing a PS5 version with all the DLC on the disc. But anyways, going back to this game, um, you drive in this game very different from most driving games. You actually use the analog sticks only to do your turns and your driving, so it took a bit for me to get used to. Now, I didn't win any races as of yet but I started to get the feel for it and it actually plays very well I think a lot of people will like this game if they give it a chance I love the neon look of the game that really stands out to me like it's always like nighttime or always dawn or something so definitely a good look for the game but anyways guys let me know how you feel about this one Alright, so next up is Made of Skur. So, I bought this game when it first came out. I think it was on Amazon. I think it was like going for like $20 and, or something like that. I can't remember. So, you play as a man named Thomas who gets a letter, I think from his estranged wife, telling him to come rescue her at this at a location. And, um, of course, he goes there by himself, which was crazy. If, in these type of situations, always bring people with you and bring a weapon. But um, anyways, going into the game, this is a horror experience that's pretty much organic. So the environment is really is what's going to like kind of trip you out in this game. It does have jump scares. And I can't reveal too much of the story to you guys because if you pay attention to, the, to what's going on around you, reading notes and stuff like that, um, you'll be rewarded in the at the end of the game. So definitely pay attention. But the game has an eerie feel to it. And just by eerie, just the environment. So definitely check this one out, guys.
The King of Fighters 13, I picked the 360 version up because it was backwards compatible with the Xbox One uh, system and the Xbox Series X, I believe, as well. So that way this game will live past, you know, the generation it came from, which was the eighth generation, excuse me, seventh generation. Um, it's an awesome fighting game, and the animations for this game were truly amazing. I felt like um, they could have had one more game with, like, a little bit more advanced animations from this art style. But either way, definitely something you guys want to pick up uh, if you like fighting games. I'm not sure how you guys feel about the King of the Fighters series, but most of you guys who should watch me uh, know I enjoy this series immensely. It's one of my favorite fighting games of all time, so definitely uh, check this out if you have the chance. So here's a game I've been wanting to talk about for a while, and in a later pickups video in the future, I will be talking about it again. But uh, this is the Coma Double Cut. Now, what this comes with is the first game and the second game on the cart. Now, if you haven't heard of these games, these are survival horror games where you pretty much play as students trying to find out, well, you're being stalked, I would say. And I'm mostly going to talk about the second one here because I have most of the footage from the second game here. But basically, you end up in some kind of alternate dimension where um, you're being stalked by... Uh, demonic version of your teacher and another character now what's crazy about this game is that you're being stalked in real time so say you're in, in a room looking around for clues you can actually hear footsteps outside you have to hide just in case they come after you so it's very trippy um, it's always very active you have to stay on your toes this game has jump scares as well it got me a couple times because it, you know I'm hard to scare but this game got me uh, at some critical moments it was pretty insane so I would definitely say this is a survival horror game that a lot of people would like to play. I don't want to go too much into this story, but it is very well done. And this collection is awesome because you get both games. So the first game, um, it didn't pull me in as much as this one did. The second game really, like I played it all the way to the end. Got the best ending, thankfully, because the other ending is not, is not good at all. But um, definitely something worthwhile if you like survival horror games, guys. Um, for, hopefully some of you guys have played this game already. But if you haven't... Um, Definitely try this one out. Dead Rising 4, I was actually really pumped to play this game. I was happy to play a Dead Rising game without time limits. I was just able to explore freely. And for the most part, I was enjoying myself with this game. But I kind of understand the people's complaints about this game where, you know, um, certain, like, um, ca enemy characters didn't have a big role in this game like the other ones. Like, for instance, the first game had that crazy clown, and he had his own cinematic entrance and boss battle and all that. And it was very dramatic. This game, they kind of treat their bosses like side characters. Like, it's just, it's kind of weird. But still, I did enjoy the game, though. I didn't like that the DLC is like, um, it's not even on the disc. You have to do an update. And that's how you get to play the rest of the game after you beat it. So that was kind of annoying. But other than that, guys, I thought it was a cool game. I like that it's during Christmas time. So put you in the Christmas spirit, I guess. But uh, <laughs> definitely, um... I mean, I would say check it out. This is the last Dead Rising game. I don't think we're going to get it anymore unless the, the, the IP gets some kind of resurgence. I don't know. But uh, you guys let me know what you think about this one. And to just let everybody know, I did like uh, Frank West's new actor in this game, the voice actor. I thought he did a good job, and they kind of like evolved the character a little bit. But anyways, yeah, check this one out. I do want to let you guys know there are two Dead Rising movies out there, and they are actually pretty good. I was very surprised by this. So the first one, Watchtower, it kind of really sticks to the like the formula of the series, and then the sequel, Endgame, kind of like uh, strays away from it. 
both do a good job really kind of presenting how video games can be done seriously as a movie and be taken seriously. Uh, they thought the acting was pretty well done. I thought it was a lot of fun, you know. And, and not only that, the movie was produced by Crackle, you know, the free streaming service. Remember, remember Crackle? I don't know if they're still around, but I feel like that's the service that would stream movies that, like, nobody would watch or something like that. But, hell, they produced this, man, so they're all right in my book, so... I would say definitely check these movies out. They're probably still on some kind of streaming service. I don't know if Crackle's still around. Uh, I got these DVDs from Amazon, so I didn't see any Blu-rays for them. But still, check these movies out, guys. Uh, Watchtower is slightly my favorite, but most people like Endgame better than Watchtower. So, um, yeah, let me know in the comments if you've seen these and what you think about them. I'm very interested in hearing your thoughts. So here is Concrete Genie. I got this on sale at Best Buy, I think, for like, it was slightly under $10. And um, this game is actually pretty cool. Uh, you could play it with the VR. I obviously don't have the VR, so I was just playing it like just bare bones pretty much. And you start this game off uh, trying to draw images in this, in this book, in this notebook. And these kids come and bully you. They take your notebook away, start tossing it around. It's like the intro for me was hard to watch because like in that type of situation, it's, somebody's about to get beat down. But... In this game, this is like one of those kid games, so they gotta like, you know, take it easy, I guess. But man, in real life, this would have been a beat down. But anyways, going back to the gameplay, they take your notebook, they toss it around, they throw it in the water, and you're trying to collect the pages um, throughout the intro. So they push you on this train, on this tram, and you're going to this light tower, and that's mostly how where, where you learn how to play the game at. You'll start drawing a lot of figures that'll come to life in that tower. This is actually a very interesting game, and it's unfortunate. I don't think it really sold well because a little bit after the game came out, it went on sale for like under $10, so maybe they made too many of them or they just weren't selling at all. So, I don't know. You guys let me know how you feel about this game, but the, what I played of it, I thought it was really good. More of my pages. Maybe she can help me get back to Denska. Here's the Blasted Master Zero series. Indie Crates did a great job reintroducing this series to fans because the first game story was kind of like really bare bones. You had to kind of like put things together. But Indie Crates was able to recreate the first game and also expand upon the story, making sure that Eve, which is a central character in the Blasted Master series, was pretty much introduced in the first game and in the series. So they did a really great job reintroducing the story to people and making the story compelling enough for us to care about it without having like to try to piece things together like in the first game years ago but anyways um so if you haven't played these games before these are pretty much single player action adventure games and um you have a vehicle that you travel with and also you get out of the vehicle and like fight enemies like that um that is only recommended in certain parts of the game and then when you get to certain parts uh of levels you'll have a like a top down view where you fight, where you pretty much fight bosses and stuff. It's actually really well done. Um, it keeps the formula fresh, thankfully, and it just it, keep, it kept me glued to it. So I had a really good time with this series. If you haven't played Blaster Master, I highly recommend you check these games out. You don't even have to go to the original games. Just go to the Blaster Master Zero series, and you'll be all right from that point on. Here's Pineview Drive. Uh, my buddy Kyle got me this a couple years ago, and this game is so weird. Like, it's... Graphically, it should not be on the PS4. It's definitely like a PS3 game, 
but it's kind of like a psychological horror game where the game kind of trips you out with the environments, but there is a lot of screen tearing, so uh, just want people to be aware of that. But as you play the game, uh, it becomes nighttime, and that's when things get really creepy. So um, I don't want to give away too much of the story, but uh, I don't even know if people will want to play this, man, because the screen tearing is so bad. But still, this might be for the old school hardcore gamer. So here's Monstrum. This is a horror game where you play in first person and you, you start the game on a cargo ship and it's always random where you're at and there's a monster stalking you. Now you never know what the monster is until you see it or even hear it. There are cameras on the ship to kind of alert the monster where you're at so you want to avoid the cameras but it can actually be pretty terrifying sometimes. I personally wasn't too scared with this game but the more you linger around uh, the more trippy this game gets because the enemy is following you and they are stalking you and they are hiding from you So it could be pretty crazy Now the game's not perfect. You know, it does have some screen tearing and glitches that kind of like Might take away from the experience, but that only happens sometimes at least when I play I think people will get a good experience out of this game if they want to but at the same time a more hardcore players might want to look somewhere else I guess what I'm trying to say is that this game is no alien isolation, so just get that out of your heads if you're thinking it's just like that. I mean, it tries to be something similar, but the execution is kind of off. Alright, so next up is Mystic Bell. This is a game I think either developed or published by WayForward. I'm not really sure. But uh, I was able to get a copy of this game thanks to my buddy Cello. Cello, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate you. And this is a, I want to say this is a side-scrolling adventure slash RPG game because you do level up in this game. But what really stood out to me in this game is the sprite-based graphics. I love that type of stuff and I, I want more games to be like this again. I know it's expensive and it takes a lot more time to do this stuff, but man, these games just have a certain type of charm that just, I don't know, it's just unparalleled. I haven't got that far in the game yet, but still right now I'm trying to like uh, level up, like kind of like overpower myself a little bit. That's how I like to play RPG games. I like to be just a step, like two steps ahead of where I'm supposed to be at just to make things easier. But anyways, guys, if you play this one, let me know what you think about it. Here's Charles of Mana remake. So this is the third game in the Secret of Mana series. And the second game, which was Secret of Mana, they remade that. And I thought it was a pretty good remake. Some people were iffy about it, but I thought it was pretty good. But this one, like, really blows that one out of the water. This is an outstanding game. And pretty much when you start the game, you can start with three characters. Your main character and two other ones. Now, they eventually all meet up at a certain time, so you just kind of, like, pick the ones that are going to, like, go on the adventure together. The game starts out, each character has a different way they start the game out. Some experiences will be dramatic, some characters will be betrayed, or some characters just have a coming-of-age story, so it's really unique to the character you choose. I feel like this game will pull you in even more so than Secret of Mana, so if you see this one out there, I would say definitely give it a chance. It's very unique. Unfortunately, though, it's not two players from what I'm, I've seen. I have the, the original game is actually two to three players. Uh, this one, single player only. But hey, maybe that'll enhance the experience. Be careful! <laughs> Myself. 
Here's a game I know a lot of people don't know about, Midnight Run. Konami tried to dip their toe into the arcade racer, and this one was actually a pretty good game. It handles a little bit rough, at least it did for me. The first time I played it, I was doing okay, then the second time I played it, um, I actually put this in a Metal Jesus video, and the gameplay, I was, I was kind of, it was kind of rough for me. I was messing up really bad, but still, the game was a lot of fun. It was released in Japan and PAL territory. I got the PAL version just so I could have the English text on the case. So, uh, if you played this one, let me know how you feel about it. I believe it was in arcades in America, but I'm not really sure. It might have been under a different name. I picked up Tokyo Highway Battle because I was so in love with Midnight Run. Uh, I wanted to get another racing game very that, that at least I thought was similar to it. One of the last games I wanted to pick up for my PlayStation Vita was Epic Mickey Part 2. Um, this game is actually really a lot of fun, and if you haven't played this game yet, guys, you definitely are missing out. The Vita version was hard for me to get, so luckily my buddy, uh, we did a trade, and I got it like that. But um, I felt like this was just like kind of like one of the last games I really wanted on the Vita system. So I went all out to pretty much get it, and the Vita collecting for me has pretty much died off, man. I mean... As much as I love the Vita, this is nothing else I really want for it, at least that I've seen. But um, you can tell the developers were trying to make something really special with this game. You know, they were probably hoping for more sequels in the future. But I feel like this game kind of got lost in the mix with other games. So a lot of people don't, don't know about it, especially the Vita version. Most people will get this game if they've seen it or, or own it. It'll be on the 360 or PS3. I think it came out for the Wii as well, but I'm not really sure about that. But the Vita version... Definitely a unique game because I think it only came, well, obviously it only came out in PAL territories as a physical. Here is a reimagination of Alter Beast for the PS2. Now, this game only came out in PAL territories and in Japan. Like, I feel like it should have came out to America, but for some reason Sega said, nah, we're not going to make that happen. But got the PAL English version, and I thought this game was... It, it's it's slightly above average, I would say. I like the production values that they try to put into it to make it very cinematic, but ultimately, it came up a little short. And you know that's all right. You know it shows. It, I think they made a good effort. I really do. And I think the game is playable. I mean, it's slightly above average, I would say. Uh, I would have really enjoyed it playing it back in the day when it first came out. Um, but I was still excited to get this game. I was so excited. I even took a picture. Uh, that you guys are seeing now. So, um, I don't know. If you're an Alter Beast fan, I would say give this one a try. The Beast is taking over your mind. You're going to die unless we do something. Don't worry, it's just a tranquilizer. Transformation puts quite a bit of stress on your cerebral cortex. That's the human part of your brain. We don't want your mind to transform as transform. well, do we? Transform? What are you talking about? I don't suppose you would have the chips with you like you're supposed to. Though, I doubt that in your current state you even know what I'm talking about. Wait! Damn! So the next two games are pretty much the same. We have Initial D Street Stage, and we also have Initial D for the PS3, which is Extreme Stage. This that this was actually the last game released on a home console system from the Initial D, and um, these games are a lot of fun. Um, you got it takes a bit to get used to, especially the PSP version. But mainly, I'm going to show you guys a PS3 version here. I am not good at these games, but I'm having fun trying to be good. 
One of the things that stands out about this game is I love the soundtrack. The soundtrack really helps the mood of racing. You know, it makes you, I don't know, it just makes you want to win. And the drifting, as you can see, is pretty crazy. But still, you know, um, it, it takes a bit of get, getting used to, for me at least. But I don't know. Maybe other people will be better at it than me. But I'm having fun with this game. Definitely happy I got it on the PS3. So here is Midnight Will Gone for the PS2 and Midnight Will Gone for the PS3. So we'll start with the PS2 one first. I originally saw this at a sit-down cabinet at an arcade, and I thought it was actually Initial D. But I noticed the game was vastly different, uh, where this game pretty much focuses on aesthetics and speed. Initial D focuses on techniques and drifting. I actually feel like I like Midnight Will Gone a lot better because it just feels like it's straightforward, I would say. But the thing about this game is crazy is that, um, Though you're racing really fast in this game, you can actually blow your engine. And when I was playing the PS3 version of the game, now the game's in Japanese, so I couldn't understand what the characters were saying, but I thought the girl in the car with me was like going crazy because I was going too fast, which she was really going crazy for because she knew when my engine was about to blow, and I didn't even know it, so I was racing this guy, I was winning, but my engine blew, so obviously I lost the race. But um, yeah, you just gotta be careful in this game about you know like making sure your engine is good to go because you will be going really fast and it's very intense. A lot of fun. The PS3 version I think is still online. Um, it seems like it's very easy to get online with the game, but you know this is like an older PS3 game, so I'm not really sure. But a lot of PS3 games that we you guys probably don't know about are still online. So this one would definitely be fun to play with somebody online, but I doubt that I'll find a match. But still, it's nice to know that the option is still there. Here's the Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel. Now I wanted to pick these up because um, I, I beat the first two games. I haven't got to the third one really yet or the fourth one, but I wanted to knock them out before they became hard to find. You know, one of the most annoying things about these sequels, especially with RPGs, is that you know, if you miss out on them, you know, you'll be paying expensive prices for them. So I went ahead and knocked these out at GameStop before they got expensive. This is the type of well-made turn-based RPG that a lot of people you know remember it kind of from the golden years of RPGs you know the game is just very well done very refined uh, likable characters great music uh, great story you know it, it's all here and it's amazing you know it's, it sucks they couldn't get it all in one game but there's so much story to tell in this series that they had to expand it so um, if you have an option of picking all these games up I would say definitely do it um, you, you won't get let down the fourth game may be a little bit different with story but still it all comes together and they're all very well done blinding light gather in my place now out of my way we'll keep going for a brighter tomorrow the embers of war are about to ignite Alright, so next up is Bubble Bobble for Friends. Uh, I think I talked about this before in a video. Maybe it was just the Switch version. I can't remember, but I did get the PS4 version from Amazon. And this is an excellent Bubble Bobble game. I'm hoping by supporting this game, they, they may look into like uh, redoing the Rainbow Island games. But um, you never know. But this is an awesome game because they expand... Well, I won't say they expand on the Bubble Bobble formula, but they just kind of bring it bring some fresh air into it in a way it's a lot of fun and plus this game actually comes with the original bubble bobble on it as well so you get two games for the price of one Woo! <laughs> 
speaking of Rainbow Islands, now I think you guys already know I had the NES version, but I was able to pick up the PAL NES version, which is pretty much a different game. Same gameplay, but just made by different developers. Now, this PAL version you're seeing here was done by Ocean. Now, they don't really have a great track record for, like, good NES games, but still, this one actually looks better than the NES version that was done by Tidal Games. Now, I only got this version of the game because I want every version of Rainbow Islands because it's one of my favorite platform games of all time. And, you know, just seeing all the different versions out there is kind of cool. So, I got this f with a trade from my buddy, thankfully, Cliff. Thanks for looking out for me, buddy. I appreciate you. But honestly, there's no reason for anybody else to get this game unless they're a Rainbow Islands enthusiast. So, uh, uh, yeah, let me know what you think about this one compared to the NES version. Here's CrossCode. So there was a lot of hype behind this game. And, um, you know, I, I decided to take a look at it, you know, being that it was like a 16-bit RPG. So this, not to go too much into the story, but the story in this game is that in the future, people are using virtual reality to like to play video games and it's getting very serious and crazy. But I was uh, pleasantly surprised by this game. You know, uh, the developer did a great job really, you know, using the 16-bit formula and like uh, not abusing it in a way because a lot of 16-bit games they try to bank off the nostalgia and they're not very good games this one is one of the games that's actually good and you should keep your eyes on this one it's definitely a lot of fun um like i, I want to go more into the story with you guys but i can't because it's like it's it's crazy and it's, and it's pretty deep so i'll just leave it up to your interpretations but uh, cross code if you see this one out there I would say definitely give it a chance it is on Amazon I believe the American version was an Amazon exclusive so uh, or if you want to get it from strictly limited import it you know you could do that as well I don't know how long it'll take but you know there's that option as well what I will tell you about this game is that if you're looking for a deep story and a good time you know very similar to games like uh, an experience like with Chrono Trigger uh, I think cross code is that game so uh, definitely check this one out <laughs> So I recently got Outrun on the Sega Saturn. Now I didn't want to get it through the Sega Ages uh, American version because you guys know how expensive that is. So I went ahead and got the Japanese version. Now what I did to get this, I actually sold my Genesis copy because honestly guys, man, I want the best version of this game. I'm not going to play the Genesis version over this. So I sold that and with the money I got for that, I bought this one. Now I feel like this is the best version of Outrun out there, at least I know of as the physical. Um, you guys let me know if there's some kind of like a, I don't know, computer version or whatever like that out there. But this game runs at 60 frames per second. It's buttery smooth. It's definitely the way to play the first OutRun game. Now saying that, I don't think it's better than OutRun 2 or OutRun Coast to Coast. But even so, this one still keeps its charm. Here's Ginger Beyond the Crystal. This is a 3D platform game and it'll pretty much remind you of how 3D platform games were in the PS1 era. Shout out to my buddy Kyle for recommending this game man, and sending it my way. I appreciate you bro. Now as a 3D platform game, the game needs a bit of polish but that won't stop you from getting sucked in. Uh, the, the world that you're in is really like lively and it's beautiful to look at so it's definitely going to pull a lot of you guys in. I just want to kind of warn you that it may start off kind of rough for some people with the polish you know like you know combat doesn't feel satisfying and the platforming is kind of weird sometimes but still this is a good game. Definitely put it on your radar if you're looking for platformers. Here's a Plague Tale Innocence. So uh, I had been wanting this game for a long time. But when I finally got it, you know, I enjoyed it to a certain point. Then I got flustered with it. I was like, oh, man, I don't want to play this game anymore. But I stuck with it, and I got past the part. I actually played this on a live stream, so that's probably why I was getting flustered. But still, this is a solid game. And I'm glad they're coming out with a sequel for it. But I'm hoping that the sequel won't be like a... Um, 
I guess like an escort quest. You know, hopefully uh, in the sequel, you won't have to escort your little brother around anymore. The girl will be on her own, or she'll have some friends that, that'll know how to fight pretty much. But anyways, that's not taken away from this game. It's still a solid game. Uh, it was a lot of fun and uh, very interesting. So um, definitely if you see this one out there for cheap, I would say go ahead and try it out. And, you know, you can also watch my live stream if you want to see where I got flustered at. But I don't recommend it because I was, I was getting pretty mad. Here's Young Justice Legacy. So uh, this is based off the series of the same name. And uh, the reason I picked this up was because it had its own story. Plus, I like the, the games that are kind of like beat-em-ups. Like, similar to, like, X-Men Legends, I would say. Now, I heard that the game has, like, glitches that kind of pissed a lot of people off. But I'm able to probably look past that for this game because I like the series so much. So, uh... Let me know what you guys think about this one. I don't think anybody, I don't think a lot of people know it exists. Or maybe it was so bad that nobody really cared about it. But uh, still, something I wanted to pick up because you just never know. Next up is Eternal Poison. So, man, don't let this game fool you. Even though it's published by Atlas, this game is pretty... Oh, man, it'll take a lot to, for people to try to get into this one. I'm not saying it's a bad game, but it needed a bunch more polish, I would say. And this was supposed to be the first of a trilogy, I believe. I traded my buddy Justice for this game. Justice, if you, you remember that, man, you know how long ago that was. And I'm just now getting to this game to show it in this video, so... Um, yeah, there's that. <laughs> but this game is something I would definitely call a goth tactical RPG. And <laughs> I was actually going to trade it to my buddy X, man. But um, he doesn't really play RPGs, so I kind of like put that on hold. But I'm going to go ahead and keep this one because I want to try to get through it and see if there's any more like, um, I don't know, man. If this game has any more to offer. But what I did play of it, it just seemed kind of subpar in a way. So I don't know. The story jumps around too much. It just it feels kind of off or maybe just rushed. But um, if you guys in the comments have played this one, give me your thoughts on this one. Here is the PAL version of Ghost Hunter. Now, I just got this because I actually like the cover a lot better than the American cover. And what's funny that a lot of people don't know about this game is that actually Sony actually created this game. This is one of their original IPs. But they didn't want to bring it to America for some reason, so Namco actually picked it up and brought it to America. I'm really glad they did because this game is freaking fantastic. It would have been a shame if it was only left in uh, like other countries, I would say, besides America. So um, if you haven't played this game, it's like kind of like a, it's like a Ghostbusters game before Ghostbusters. And when I say that, I actually mean a good Ghostbusters game. It's very well done, uh, good voice acting, cool characters, lots of different worlds you go to to try to like, um, you know hunt down these ghosts and bring order so i don't want to go into too much of the story but uh i think lazarus smith is a funny ass character he's definitely likable so a lot of people will be will be able to pick up this game and relate to it definitely check this one out <laughs> So here is Curse, the Eye of Isis. So this is a survival horror game. And though this is the PAL version of the game, it did come out on the Xbox in America. So just want to put that out there. That version is just called Curse, though. So, uh, But just letting you guys know, they are the same game. Now, the game takes place in the 1890s in the Museum of History in, in Britain, I believe. Excuse me, Museum of Natural History. And um, it kind of reminds me of the mummy movies for some reason I you know I don't know if it just took inspiration from those but still um, I, I like it you know I actually like those movies so definitely that's a, that's a plus for me now pretty much these thugs try to come and steal a dagger and this mysterious fog uh, engulfs the whole museum turning everybody into monsters I'm really enjoying this game and it's kind of under the radar for most people because I don't think it got a lot of promotion in America of course being a survival horror game so 
I'm not saying it's hit or miss, but it's definitely something I think a lot of survival horror fans will want to pick up. Give this game a go if you see it out there. Mr. Darian Day. All right, so next up we have Galaxy Force Part 2. Now, most people know probably about Galaxy Force 2 for the Sega Genesis. That game was pretty subpar to its arcade counterpart. This collection actually makes up for it. It comes with Galaxy Force Part 1 for the Sega Master System. It does come with the Genesis port, which I'm pretty sure people will skip over. It comes with the arcade port and also the special edition, which is awesome, which was, which was uh, done by M2. And it go, the game plays at 60 frames per second, so definitely an amazing version of the game to play. This collection is definitely worth having. I haven't seen this available anywhere else besides the PS2. And of course, the Sega Ages 2500 collection has a lot of hidden gems on there. So definitely check this one out if you're able to play it, guys. This game is a lot of fun. Definitely a throwback to arcade shooters, uh, very similar to stuff like Afterburner. And next up is Fantasy Zone Complete Collection. So, man. I'm happy about all these games on here, but the main one I'm happy about is that Super Fantasy Zone is on here. That's my favorite Fantasy Zone game. Now, I'm not sure if these games had like a more modern release in America. You know, I know at the time when I got this, you know, uh, nobody like had them on the digital store or anything like that. So I wanted to get a physical for them, of course, and this was the best thing for me. What's cool about these collections is that you could play like different versions of the game. So it's really like a complete experience if you get one of these Sega Ages, the 2500 series. Now, next up is SDI and Quartet. Now, I haven't played SDI that much. Uh, I know it's just a satellite kind of shooter in space, but uh, Quartet is the real reason I picked up this collection. So, Quartet is kind of like um, Sega's version of Contra. Now, the version that we got on the Master System was kind of like, I don't know, to me, I thought it was meh, but the arcade version that a lot of people don't know about is actually on here. And um, the arcade version is two players, but not only that, if you plug in the multi-tap, you could play four players at the same time, so it's kind of cool how M2 added that in there. Not really much else to say about this one besides, you know, it's a cool running gun shooter where you get jetpacks and stuff. Um, but uh, it's definitely one of those games that probably needs some kind of modern release, I would say. You know, especially for the old school fans. Here's the Fate Unlimited Codes. Um, this was a game made by Capcom. It's a fighting game that came out on a PSP as a digital download, but on the PS2... And the PSP in Japan, it came out as a physical. Now, this is the collector's edition. It comes with, um, it looks like a younger version of Saber. Uh, I'm not really sure. But anyways, you're seeing it here. And uh, I got this because it was so cheap. I think right before the whole COVID thing happened, um, this was on eBay for around, I think I got this for like $30. So, yeah, I got an amazing deal here. But I believe the standard edition is still going for cheap. And this is a pretty solid game. You know, Capcom has a track record of making good fighting games. So they haven't really made one that has let me down. Besides one of the Street Fighter games, which I, I will not mention. But um, definitely, if you're into this lore, this series, um, this is a game you'll want to check out. <laughs> And last but not least, we have Fear Collector's Edition. Now, I remember showing this on Jason's channel, uh, I think uh, maybe it was two years ago, I can't really remember. 
but I had been wanting this thing for years. As soon as I found out about it, you could probably see why this wasn't a pre-order at GameStop. But still, I mean, man, they went all out with this one. And I don't know if we'll ever get another Fear game, so I wanted to go all out, so I picked this one up. Fear 3 remains my favorite in the series. I consider Part 2 to be the best one, but Fear 3 is my favorite. And the reason because it, the co-op mode is really cool during the story mode and the multiplayer F and run levels. Man, those are so intense and just like, ugh. They're just, they're scary. So, it's just definitely, this game is like right out by alley. So, if you haven't played Fear 3, uh, definitely try this one out. If you're able to get the collector's edition for a good price, awesome. Sorry, this will be the last one. This is the Aleste Collection. I got this when it came out on Play Asia, and this consists of the Game Gear games of the Aleste games and also the Master System games. Um, if you haven't heard of Aleste, um, you've probably heard of games like Musha on the Genesis or even Super Aleste for the Super Nintendo. But unfortunately, those games aren't on here, but still, the earlier games are on here, and they're freaking awesome. Um, some of the most expensive uh, Game Gear games out there. But what's really cool about this collection is that they made a new Aleste game, Aleste 3. And it's pretty much like a Game Gear game, but still, man, just the, the fact that they brought this out on here was freaking fantastic. So, if you're able to get your hands on this collection, if you like shoot 'em ups, definitely do so immediately. Alright guys, so that's going to do it for this video. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, you are freaking awesome. I really appreciate it because this video, man, I just did not want to finish this video. But still, wanted to get it out for you guys. So, uh, once you start working on something, you can't stop. So, anyways, shout out to my buddy Cag. He's been wanting to see this video for a long time. So, I finally got it done, buddy. Hope you enjoy it. And uh, thanks everybody for sticking around. Anyways, guys, I got to get out of here. I'm tired of editing. Radical Reggie, and I will see you in the next video.